gentlemen, how do you do? Today's three minute hit is about a company called NIOCorp. NB is the ticker symbol. I am Chris Barry, your friendly host and founder of Equity Guru. Um, look, I know that most of you out there have no idea what Niobium is, um, and I don't blame you, uh, but it's one of those things out there that a lot of industries need. Specifically, I'd say that you'd be looking at uh, ferro-niobium, uh, where auto manufacturers, they want a stronger metal, but they also want it light. If a, a lighter metal, a lighter car makes for a better fuel economy, it's a whole bunch of things. But you also want that, that metal to be strong. You don't want it to collapse in on of itself in a crash. So niobium, pretty good option for, for that sort of uh, industry. Now, the problem is there's only three companies in the world that supply that to the auto industry. Niocorp is trying to be a fourth. Now, that's all well and good. A lot of companies try to be a lot of things. I see you out there rolling your eyes saying, yeah, 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 sure thing. They're going to actually be starting producing Niobium when? Okay, it's fair. It's fair. You make a fair point. Here's the deal. If you look through Niocorp's actual news releases over the last two months, what you'll find is a lot of talk about two things. One, advancing the project to the point where they are starting to prepare it for production work, not actually ripping ore out of the ground, but they've got a demonstration plant in Quebec, in Trois-Rivières, that is showing that they're getting good recovery on titanium and on niobium. And in fact, they're using that demonstration plant to improve the recovery rates. They've managed to double the recovery of the titanium. The niobium is around 90%. These are good numbers. All right, to the, the, this, is, this indicates that they're going to get a higher grade, which is easy to sell, brings about a better premium at the end of the day. So on one side, they're establishing that what they're getting, they can make good use of. And that's an important thing. You can dig up or out of the ground any day of the week. Can you get it down to a grade where somebody who needs it is going to say, please send me a crate of that. I'm into it. Niocorp has managed to make that little demonstration plant payoff in that respect. The second thing is, if you look at all of the news releases, they are about getting them to a place where they can bring down some cash and ridiculously quickly move into a production model. Now, what I mean by that, I mean, if you look through their, just the last, uh, let's say 12, 15 news releases, uh, what you'll find is, is the company sees improved niobium recovery. We talked about that at the, the plant. Uh, straight after that, they show ability to increase titanium recovery to 83%. We talked about that. They've outlined a phased approach for production on aluminum, uh, aluminum scandium. Now, I don't know what you use aluminum scandium for, but I'm, I'm sure it's, it's, it's a lot of uses for it. I could look it up, but let's just say it's going to be useful. They're pulling a lot of different things out of this project is the point. And they're getting their plant in a fashion where it is useful to recover all of these elements that are all in demand around the world. Now, next, if you look at their news, you'll find Niocorp completes geotechnical drilling at Elk Creek. What does that mean? So what they're basically doing is they've set up a bunch of different holes along the property to say, not do we need to expand our resource estimate. They already know that there's a lot of stuff down there. What they're doing now is they're drilling so that they have a good idea of where across their property there is more stuff to get and not as much stuff to get. There's only shallow drilling, right? But boom, 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 boom. Let's set up a grid. Let's find out what's make the makeup of the sand and dirt and soil and gravel and whatever else is on the ground so that we know how deep we have to go, so that we know, oh, there's a corner there where there's a lot more stuff than we thought. This is all the stuff that you do before you start grading and building roads and putting up permanent structures. This is a good sign. Nobody does this unless their plan is to progress to that stage, right? This isn't a, we did some geotechnical drilling and we found something that's going to double our share price. No, this is something that moves you forward to a place where when you go and get that big fat money from the big fat bank, they say, ah, we like that you've done all the work you're supposed to do. We like that you're ready to actually make use of that big money and actually build a functional mine. Now, at the same time, Nebraska, where the Oak Creek project is, is, is situated, has just released a bunch of tax cuts out there. Uh, the company's quite happy with that and has applauded the Republican governor for making it a better place to do business. Great. This is good. 
They've also uh, given notice under the standby equity deal that uh, they requested the purchase of 100,000 shares of the company's common stock uh, at a purchase price equal to 97% of the daily volume weighted average, blah, 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 blah. Basically, income's about $700,000. Great. So there's some money sitting around. Uh, at the same time now, we're getting to the big picture. And that is $700,000 is great for keeping the lights on. What do you need to build a mine? Well, for that, you need to go to an institution and fork out for a big ass loan. And what they've done is they've set that in sp into play. So Niacorp had announced earlier in the year that they'd done a deal with uh, the US Export Import Bank to make available funding when required for them to build out their functional mine. Uh, didn't move the needle much in terms of share price because it was kind of a, a, you know, a memorandum of understanding at that point. But now what we're finding is that Niacorp has actually made an application for debt financing from the US Export Import Bank under its Make More in America initiative. It has submitted its phase one application following receipt of a letter of interest from Exim in February that we talked about. And uh, now they're looking to get this thing financing the construction and development of the project. Long story short, they've gone to the institution and said, here's the thing that we'd like to do. What do you think? The bank has said, in theory, we like what you're doing. We think we would give you the money that you need to do that. Let's talk again when you've got your ducks in a row. Niacorp has gone out, got more of their ducks in a row. Quack, quack. And now they're actually applying for that development money. Now, this is debt financing. This is going to put the company in a place where at some point in its future, it will need to repay that debt or pay off a bunch of interest. Either way, you move from a safe risk-free or low-risk environment to a slightly more risky environment, that is okay. That's fine. That's what you've got to do to become, to go from a $60 million small cap to a billion dollar heavy cap, right? So Niacorp is showing its work. It's out there doing the work, letting you all see it, giving you the confidence that there is something at the end of all this. They have said since we started working with them, which was about eight months ago, they have said they want to progress this to a mine. They have done all sorts of things to show their work. They have never stepped back from that uh, decision, that promise. And what we're seeing in their news flow right now is not a guarantee that they're going to get to that place. Nothing ever is until you're actually at that place. But what it is, is it's advancing the work to get to that place. I would expect, and I think the company has said this, that within six to nine months, they'll have an answer on whether that financing is there or whether the financing needs to be re reassessed. But from what they know, from what they're looking at right now, from what they know about their property, from what they've discussed with the bank, they feel confident. I feel confident. Now, this is a client of mine. And so you got to take everything with uh, an ounce of salt, right? Like you believe me or you don't believe me. Nothing I've said here is pushing past what they have said in their news releases. They're doing the work. They've, they've done the geo tracking. They've, they've advanced the, uh, the debt financing with the bank. They're out there uh, raising a little bit of money here and there just to pay the bills in the meantime. They're doing the geotechnical drilling. Uh, they've got that, that little baby plant up in, in Trois Rivières uh, in Quebec. Uh, they've got that working on the aluminum scandium, they've got it on the titanium, they've got it on the niobium. Look, if, if I was trying to actually get a critical minerals mine up and running, all of the things that they've done over the last three months, I would expect to be done over two years. Because that's generally the pace of things, right? You raise money, you get a thing done. You raise a bit more money, you get another thing done. You do a bit of drilling, you figure out are we actually onto something here? Maybe the stock goes up, you raise a bit more money, do a bit more drilling. They've done all that. They know what they've got. What they're doing right now is that work that 95% of mining companies never get to, which is we know we've got something. We know that we're going to go get it. We've got to go and do a bit more work to show everybody that we're serious. And as we complete all of that work, then the institution comes and says, here is your check for a fat amount of money that gets you to the place you need to be. Now, they will likely need more borrowing or more money raised at the end of this to actually get to a functioning plant. 
full disclosure. You're not going to just do this one deal with this bank and money and unicorn shit falls from the sky. There's still some work to do. But my point here is Niacorp is doing that work. There's nothing in their news flow that makes you think they're not going to get where they need to be. They are one, two, three, four, five, one step at a time, putting it all together into a place where I can realistically see that there's something at the end of it all here. Now, I've got a significant investment in Niacor. I'm not going to hide that from anybody. I think that's uh, not something to be uh, concerned with. I think actually that demonstrates that I'm not full of shit. Um, when I talk about Niacorp and what I think is going to happen to it, I've invested money into it because I believe in that. And I'll tell you something else. I invested money in it at a higher price than what it is right now. Not at all concerned. What I'm looking for from Niacorp is not that next week it will be higher than it is this week. I don't need to go and sell everything and get my money back or make a 10% profit. I'm there for when Niacorp actually gets things into play and we all know that this will be an actual functioning mine delivering minerals that are in short supply, almost non-supply in North America and get them to who they need to get them to quickly, efficiently at a high grade and a low cost. Everything right now that they're doing is part of the steps to get to that place. Everything that they've done over the last year and a half is what you need to do to get to that place. Now, would they prefer the stock price to be up? 100% they would. Would they prefer people to be uh, investing in the story now instead of waiting to see what might happen in the next six months? I'm sure. But my point is, I don't give a shit about whether things happen tomorrow or in a week or in a month. I know that this thing is going to progress. I have that faith. I've put my money where my mouth is on that. I have that faith. I've talked to management. I have that faith. I've watched what they do. I have that faith. I see what they put into place and who they're dealing with and what the promise actually is at the end of it all. And I believe that those critical minerals will only be worth more money in six months, a year, two years, however long it takes to get to a place where there is an actual confirmation that the Niacorp Elk Creek project is moving forward. Now, I know you, some of you guys are traders and none of that is appealing to you because it's not going to deliver you your 30% increase tomorrow. And to that, bye. Stop the video and go look at TikTok for a while. It's fine, you guys. Be traders. Uh, you know, flex your muscles and, and call yourselves gods and whatever you need to do. But I'm an investor. I'm not a trader, right? I don't need to make a profit tomorrow because my end goal is 15 years down the line. I want to be in companies that I believe in 15 years will be well above where they are today. Now, will this one go down tomorrow? Maybe it will. Maybe it'll go to $5. And if it does, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to buy more of it. But where I am right now with this investment, I'm not looking to sell. So I don't give a shit if it's down 20%, 30%, whatever. I don't give a shit if it's down more tomorrow. It's just going to be a buying opportunity for me. What I give a shit about is, is this company really trying to stretch goal itself from a company that knows it's got some shit in the ground to a company that's pulling that shit out of the ground? I believe it is. Now, I know that Niacorp's lawyers are going to crawl all over this video and say, well, we're a bit weary because you can't be too promotional. Because honestly, that's been the experience with them over the last 12 months. And I understand where that's coming from. When you're a company that's doing business in the US, when you're listed on the NASDAQ, you've got a lot of rules that you've got to follow. Here's my thing. Everything that I say about this company, although I have a commercial arrangement with them, is on me. My belief is that these guys are in a good place. When I reflect what's in their news releases, I believe that those news releases are telling you the true story. Is there risk? There's always risk. And if you don't want risk, then you shouldn't be investing in stocks. You should be going and getting 0.3% uh, on your savings account. For mine, I like a little risk. I like a, a little risk where I look at it and think it's low and others look at it and assume it's high. That's my perfect scenario. And that's where I believe this scenario is right now. I think people look at Niacorp's share price and as everyone in the business has been down over the last six months, they say, oh, it's, it's going down. I don't want to invest in that. The smart people, the investors, see a slow sinking that's in line with the sector or in line with the broader markets to be not something to be sneering at. This is an opportunity for you, I think, and you've got to figure out your own decisions on this, but to me, it's an opportunity to, to buy inexpensively and get yourself a position that is substantial enough that if 
it does what I think it's going to do, that it will be a significant change in your life. That's what I'm looking for. Is this that? Man, I know. Look, people in my business will say, sure it is. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. This is definitely going to go up. Don't believe any of those people. When you read the fine print, they'll tell you, don't believe a word I say. This is all just for entertainment. You should speak to an investment advisor. I say the same thing just in case. But here's my reality. I'm, I bought a significant amount of this stock because I believe in it. Haven't sold it because I believe in it. Not calling up the CEO every weekend and bitching at him because I believe in it because I see they're doing the work. $6.86 where it was $9 a couple of months ago. Fuck, that's a bargain. I wish I'd have held off and bought it today. But I'll tell you what else. There's other people looking at this and they're watching every day. And if it starts to turn around, these guys are going to start jumping in. I believe in these people. Now, maybe they'll do me dirty. Maybe they will never get a mine off the ground. Okay, sometimes it just doesn't work out. But I look at what they're doing. And it's the things that you would do if you were trying to build a mine. And most mining exploration companies don't do that stuff. So for me, NB, Niacorp, good deal. Take, why do I keep calling these things three minute hits? They never go three minutes. This is like, what is this? 16 minutes. This isn't a three minute hit. This is a fucking diatribe. This is a manifesto. Niacorp, I believe in it. Hit the subscribe button if you uh, want more of this stuff. And if you love Niacorp, tell us in the comments. If you think Niacorp is, uh, is crappy, tell us in the comments. Man, look, we try and keep it honest here. Um, I'm trying to keep it a buck fifty as the kids may say in the parlance of the times. Uh, but honestly, I believe in what NICORP is doing. I believe it's necessary. I believe there's a real opportunity there if they can get it together. I believe that the markets haven't been kind, but they haven't been kind to anybody. And I want titanium and niobium and aluminum scandium to be coming out of that project in three, five, six years. So that's where my money is. NB. Mm -hmm.